Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I've come to Adcox Nursery, which is in Fuquay, North Carolina. This is actually a nursery that you can come to. Um, they're open Monday through Friday, and then seasonally they're open on Saturdays. Uh, they do probably the bulk of their business is to local landscapers. This is a suburb of Raleigh, and it's growing very, very quickly. And so there's a lot of landscapers uh, in this area uh, making a living, and a lot of the plants that they plant are from this nursery. Uh, there's another video uh, that I shot here with my buddy Sean Girk, and you'll probably see first. One thing I wanted to shoot here that I thought would be interesting is what plants uh, does this nursery use for screening? They are completely surrounded by subdivisions. Um, you can probably see that in the uh, in the drone footage if I've if I've got drone footage up here above it. They're completely surrounded uh, by houses, and so in order to kind of fit in and be a farm in a very growing city. Uh, he's got very dense screening plants. This is a row of Nellie Stevens hollies. Uh, in this spot, I guess these have probably reached uh, 15 to 20 feet uh, tall. Uh, in this spot, there's a couple green giant arborvita that have been planted here. This row of Nellies that's along the road out here have been here since I used to shop here. I actually used to shop here as a landscaper. And then when I had my nursery, I sold them one gallon material that they stepped up into bigger containers and grew out. So uh, these, this row of Nellies up here has basically become trees and they've limbed them up uh, over the years so they can continue to drive under them. But uh, I, what I'm gonna do is just kind of make a circle around here, see if we can find any other things that they're using to, uh, to farm in the city. The lighting is not great under these Nellies, but you can see, I think if we get in here close enough, you can see how they basically become tree formed along the road. You can probably hear that road noise uh, on the other side. And they're gotta be 20 uh, to 25, 20 to 25 feet high. I'm gonna swing you around this way. There's more of them, more of them, more of them. And then we get to a spot where he's used uh, magnolia and it looks like Little Jim uh, magnolia was used for this part of the screen. And I'll back out of here enough so you guys can get a better perspective on how tall these actually are. They're probably uh, tipping 30 feet, um, if I had to uh, guess. There's a couple flower buds up on them right now. It's December 1st. Those things just don't have an off switch at all. And this plant to the left, which is going to be completely blown out by the uh, sunlight uh, in the middle of the day, is uh, a Japanese cryptomeria. That's likely Yoshino cryptomeria, which big, beautiful plant. Uh, probably not a great residential uh, screening plant. Um, you notice how the uh, uh, magnolias keep their foliage to the ground. You notice how the Nellie Stevens on the other side kept their foliage to the ground. I just showed you some that were limbed up just because they have to drive through that path. But uh, for the most part, they'll keep their foliage to the ground. This thing, if you look down here at the bottom, is naked at the bottom and it wasn't done on purpose. They just kind of thin like that. Uh, so great screening plant if you're 25 feet tall, not necessarily down here at the bottom, but a beautiful beautiful plant. I've shown you many dwarf uh, cryptomeria as well. Moving a little further down, those are actually tree-formed uh, Japanese ligustrum, and those are um, those could be full to the ground or uh, limbed up into tree forms uh, like those are. They've been underplanted with what looks like uh, some camellias and things that will fill that in, but that's a uh, ligustrum japonicum. Uh, I'm guessing that's a uh, it doesn't look like recurvifolium. It doesn't have that curl in the leaf, but uh, so ja Japanese ligustrum. A few slightly smaller uh, screening plants here, but they're getting the job done. This is a Camellia sasanqua that's very fastidious, blooming white here at the uh, end of uh, November, beginning of December. And uh, it's reached maybe um, 10 feet tall or so there, uh, making a great screening plant. Here's an upright juniper. This isn't blue point. I don't know, this may be Taylor's uh, juniper. Um, but uh, Blue Point, Taylor's, there's a bunch of upright, uh, narrow uh, junipers, Spartan, uh, that will work for this kind of narrow screening. And going around uh, this way, this is a Gulf Tide uh, Osmanthus. And you can see how fastidious it is, meaning they're very upright. Uh, this was in uh, Sean's video we covered. Gulf Tide, it gets the fragrant flowers like other Osmanthus, uh, but it has a uh, very upright, narrow growth habit. It, the, the leaves look completely wicked on it, like it would just eat you alive, but they're actually not soft to the touch, but they don't, they're definitely not as bad as they look from a distance. I just showed you the Gulf Tide Osmanthus. This is Osmanthus fragrance. 
And uh, look how big that bad boy has uh, gotten. Amazing, beautiful plant. Uh, just finished its first round of blooming. We had a, like a 25 degree night a few nights ago, knocked the flowers back. They will start flowering again. February, get a few warm nights in uh, February, March, and it'll start putting on some more flowers. Beautiful evergreen shrub, might get a little wide, you know, for some, for some spots. I've got three of these at my house. I'm gonna try to keep it narrower than that by doing some early spring after they flower, uh, pruning on them to keep them a little narrower to the left of that. Those are Shindo viburnums. Showed these uh, in the uh, video with uh, Sean. They grow a lot. These are 50 gallon Shindo viburnums over here. Big hole to dig there. Uh, and uh, there's ones in the ground that have been in the ground for a while, not irrigated, not, you know, just ignored. And they just become a wall like that. And there's another uh, Cryptomeria japonica back here in the uh, back. Here's another long line of those Nellie Stevens that have been limbed up on one side so that they can continue to use this road. Uh, there's a Podocarpus that was planted in this space. And I know this is a little blown out. Uh, the sun is really messing with my filming out here, but uh, Podocarpus makes a great screening plant here in the south. This is an upright narrow one, maybe Mackie uh, might be that variety. There's an Italian cypress uh, right behind it. Uh, doesn't necessarily like the south all that much, but uh, that, one's doing, that one's doing just fine. And to the left of that is a distillium. It's a very upright growing distillium, which has become a really nice screening plant. It's probably eight, nine feet tall. I'll ask them what variety this is before I, uh, before I leave this morning. It just so happens along this part of the road, uh, the road is elevated. Uh, so the nursery's kind of sunk down here. So we can get away with screening plants here that are not quite uh, as tall. And so they've used a Florida Sunshine Elysium up at that rail. And as we move this way, this is a, uh, uh, this is a holly of some kind. I think it's one of the red hollies is what it looks like. It's got the berries on it now, kind of a smaller leaf. Leaves look wicked, but it won't cut you. It's similar to that. Osmanthus. Um, there's an Osmanthus, a Goshiki Osmanthus right there, which uh, Goshiki means five colors in Japanese. It's got pinks and whites and yellows in the foliage. I've covered that plant many times. Uh, it, I've seen this plant as big as eight and ten feet tall. Slow, slow to get there. So that one up on the hills, maybe three and a half feet, four feet, and uh, it's doing a good job. Here's a Loripetalum, one of the larger growing Loripetalum varieties. This one's gotten maybe six feet tall and it's perfect screening plant up here on this bank because again, um, the, the, the hill is kind of helping with this. Uh, here's a gold mop cypress, which is, you know, these things can get 25 feet tall um, if you let them or can be kept um, as little, little round balls. Uh, this is a gulf tide, another one of those gulf tide osmanthus. And uh, moving on down, this is an ever, evergreen, uh, this is a magnolia. This is that serendipity. And I showed this in Mark Wethington's video at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. This is serendipity magnolia. Just a great, great plant. Here is a uh, sunshine ligustrum that's been allowed to just get a little bit taller. So it's probably five feet up there on the bank, uh, looking great out here in the uh, sunshine. And then a few repeats uh, as we go a little further down. So Jeff and his folks have basically made just a wall around this entire place. I passed some dwarf Burford hollies. I passed some Ely Agnes, which tend to be invasive and pr probably shouldn't be used, but it's also probably too late uh, regardless. Uh, along a, um, a fence line up at the front, which is too loud to film. And I made it back here around to the, uh, I don't know which direction. Um, I guess this is east, north. This is the north side of the nursery right here. Uh, and there's another group of magnolias that you can see. I don't know which one this one actually is. Looks a little bit like Little Jim, um, but it's, it's got a little bit of br a broader shape to it. Uh, it's just doing a fantastic job. These magnolias would definitely grow slower than a lot of other things. So it may not be for everybody if you want a fast growing screen, but if you live in the South, there's nothing more, uh, there's nothing more Southern than a Southern magnolia. So, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for uh, following along with the channel. Uh, when I see these types of things where I can hit a lot of different uh, plants that fit, in this case, screening um, a, a, as, a, uh, you know, as a category, um, I try to shoot these types of videos and uh, I'll continue to do that in the future. Thanks for following along.